very good evening and welcome to the state of business on our television this is madhu shatavapala kumar let's take a look at tonight's headlines first tree planting should be a national habit says president top german brands sri lanka relaunched in colombo we are undertaking an investment promotion mission to germany next week now the story is in detail President Maithri Pala Sirisena states that all must unite to fulfill their national responsibility during the National Tree Planting Week by planting at least one tree in every house. He made this remark participating in the progress review meeting of the Ministry of Mahavali Development and Environment held at the Ministry Auditorium yesterday. The Ministry of Environment will take steps under the guidance of the President to implement a broad program to plant 3 million plants across the country. President Sirisen explained that the planting of trees should not be limited to a particular day or a week rather it must become a public habit. Meanwhile the president instructed the relevant officers to expedite implementation work of the Uma Oya project in order for the public to reap its benefits beginning of next year. The progress of the program to present Mahavali land deeds was also discussed. The buildings which are not in use under the Ministry of Mahavali Development were scheduled to be turned over for the use of other government organizations and the progress of this program was also reviewed by the president while instructions were given to release them immediately to the relevant organizations. Moreover, President Sirsen instructed the Secretary of the Ministry of Mahavali Development and Environment, Anurad Sanaika, that if there are any public allegations regarding fraud and corruption in the projects conducted under the Ministry of Mahavali Development and Environment, such issues should be investigated and a report should be provided to him immediately. The relaunch of the fifth edition of the top German brands in Sri Lanka, organized by the delegation of German industry and commerce in Sri Lanka, with the support of the Embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany, was held in Colombo last evening in presence of Minister of Development Strategies and International Trade Malik Samaravikrama. Underlining the long-standing Sri Lanka-German business ties, Minister Samaravikrama announced the Sri Lanka Investment Promotion Week, which is scheduled to take place in Frankfurt, Hamburg, and Berlin next week. More than 100 German brands were present during the relaunch event, which was attended by the German ambassador to Sri Lanka, John Roth, and chief delegate of the German industry and commerce in Sri Lanka, Andreas Hergenrother. Our government is also very focused on the economic reforms that are needed to place Sri Lanka on a firm footing for sustainable and rapid growth. Many of the initiatives and measures we are taking may not see the results in a month or two but will provide solid foundations for decades to come. As our government reorients the Sri Lankan economy towards a more private sector and outward-oriented economy, we look forward to close engagement with top German brands to join us on this journey. Alongside this shift, I look forward to seeing more German manufacturing brands in Sri Lanka, in automotive parts, electronics and so on. We are undertaking an investment promotion mission to Germany next week in partnership with AHK. I want to thank Andreas once again and his team for the efforts to make this a successful visit. And we are, and we are visiting three cities in three days and have lined up a series of investor forums, roundtables and one-on-one -on -one meetings. Speaking at the event, German ambassador to Sri Lanka, John Roth, noted that the German market will remain important to Sri Lanka even after Britain's exit from European Union. Even after Brexit, uh, the German market will become even more important for Sri Lanka. I see it already in 2018 numbers that the exports from Sri Lanka to Germany rose again up to the double digits compared to uh, last year. While there is still room for improvement, that some of these companies, uh, a lot of these companies are represented here by agent, I think in the future we need more and more companies who also manufacture here. And for that, I think it is very helpful if the business climate continues to improve. 
during an exclusive interview on the global economy, Assistant Manager of Technical Analysis at Kand Equities Limited, Shadir Janat says that anxiety among the Asian and other emerging markets, which has been created as a result of recent sanctions imposed on Iran and the turmoil in Turkey, has benefited U.S. markets and strengthened the U.S. dollar. Speaking further, he stated that further strengthening of the US dollar can be expected along with fuel prices remaining at their current levels or to increase further. Recent sanctions on Iran and the turmoil in Turkey and also Argentina's uh, emergency austerity measures, all this has created anxiety among the Asian and uh, emerging markets and also with the improving US numbers, this has benefited the US with capital flows towards the U.S. markets. The dollar has uh, strengthened by 3.3% uh, against its major currencies and uh, attracted a safe haven appeal toward the currency since the, the global reserve currency and also the strengthening numbers of United States. With the strength dollar, we are, this has clearly impacted gold where it has lost 9.52% uh, year to date and currently remains within the $1,200 per ounce region. We can also touch on uh, go, uh, oil prices, where with these tensions where, where US has recently put sanctions on Iran and uh, again with uh, bad weather conditions of hurricane, where the, there are two evacuations uh, on Gulf of Mexico rigs and with these developments we can expect the oil prices to go from $70 per barrel mark to uh, $75 to $80 barrel region. And uh, already we have witnessed our petroleum prices in Sri Lanka uh, going, going up because of these effects with the strengthening dollar and uh, uh, strength, uh, increasing uh, uh, oil prices. So we can expect the prices to at least maintain at this level or further increase with these developments. We can expect overall the dollar strengthening further and from uh, the oil prices, with the oil prices, uh, we can expect the petroleum prices to go further or maintain at this level and of course the foreign attraction toward the Colombo Stock Exchange can be slightly impacted because of the attraction toward US markets in um, overall um, the impact due to the emerging markets. Let's take a look at more news after this short break. Welcome back. According to the Human Development Index, Sri Lanka has maintained its rank in the High Human Development category at 76th place among 189 countries. The 2018 Human Development Report released by the United Nations Development Programme on Human Development Improvements positioned Sri Lanka in the high human development category. According to the Human Development Index monitored annually by the Human Development Report, Sri Lanka gradually improved from 0.685 in 2000 to 0.770 in 2017. Sri Lanka's 2017 index of 0.770 is above the average of 0.757 for countries in the High Human Development Group and above the average of 0.638 for countries in South Asia. Moreover, the Gender Inequality Index of 2017, which reflects gender-based inequalities in reproductive health, empowerment and economic activity, ranks Sri Lanka 80 out of 160 countries. Director General of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, Upali Ratnayaka, encourages school leavers and young students to join the rapidly growing hospitality and tourism industry in order to develop the supply chain and to cater requirements as the industry expands. In an exclusive interview with our television recently, he also made the following remarks. We don't see, especially the Sri Lankan, the young people, get out of the school with a vision. Very rare. With which what will happen, you tend to start some job which you come across or maybe which you happen to meet. If a student who could not succeed in the normal education enter into a university, we always encourage them, in, them to get into a hotel school. In a hotel school, they get the vocational training, both practical and theoretical. Then we place them in places to work and 
by the time three years time they graduated or rather they get qualified as a diploma holders there our main problem is the one who get the training in a proper way after two three years keeping in the country is the most difficult thing most of the time they leave the country they go for a higher salary so this shows that it has a very high potential for the future generation they again those who are working in the country if you look at someone who is getting through a, i mean get into the industry through a some sort of a very professional training even in a hotel in kalambu or maybe in samya they get a maybe a, a, a low salary compared to a office work say for example 20000 or maybe 30000 something like that but their service charge if you look at is over 50000 some places 75000 so finally what you take home it matters 20000 plus the 70000 is 90000 is total home take home salary is 90000 whereas uh, tourism keep growing so they secure that income no any single job will pay that and in addition to that like i mean the place of work yes you get the meal while you are working you get the uniform while you are working and also coming to the management level additional facilities also given other people work hard and come to this and in this industry to spend the money but those who are working in the industry so likewise we got to think positive and work towards so that the one who going overseas also very important we don't discourage them because we have enough people to train and also these people will go go overseas and get a professional fee and come back they can be uh, even future investors so likewise there are opportunities in uh, minimum someone who is getting a higher diploma and with a two year experience going overseas minimum is 150000 salary some are earning more than that enterprise technology solution provider pixel celebrated its 15th anniversary in kalamba today the company marked this milestone with the launch of its new workspace and brand pixel 2.0 Speaking at the occasion the founder and the executive director of Pixel Prasanth Jai Maha made the following remarks Today we are a 90 strong team that works with some of the largest companies in the world from aviation company in Sweden to agricultural company in Australia we provide technology business solutions and we help solve problems to these companies and we got many things planned for the next decade Pixel now has the operational and software business knowledge coupled together with the global network and business experience of the Tavistock group we are truly a global enterprise to fuel this growth and make it possible we are looking for some of the best talent and people in sri lanka to make pixel a truly global and sri lankan enterprise let's see how the stocks performed after this short break Welcome back. Trading at the Columbus Stock Exchange ended on a negative note today. The All Share Price Index dropped 57.28 points to close at 5,971.21, and the S&P SL20 dropped 57.96 points to close at 3,072.32. The turnover was 881.1 million rupees, and 33.7 million shares were traded. Next is forex trades. With that we are wrapping up state of business for the day we'll meet you tomorrow at the same time with more news until then take care good night